everyone, it's me Jen from M Just Like You and today I wanted to do a breakdown of different types of foundation. Um, you know that I've been in the search for my holy grail and I have tried everything from drugstores to high end and I've learned a lot throughout the way and I feel like I really want to be able to tell you what I've learned so that you can learn from what I have learned and learn from my mistakes just so that it won't waste your time when you trying to find your foundation. Also, um, there's a lot of people that are, a lot of my viewers, a lot of people that I know, you really don't know a lot about foundation and um, I guess I'm just going to try and give a lot of helpful tips and hopefully it'll be helpful for you all. Um, I did get a re uh, request on the different types of powders, loose, pressed, foundation powders, and I'm going to be doing a um, video on that as well after this one. So um, if you're interested in powders, please come by and watch the video. Alright, so let's talk about foundation and how to actually find your foundation. For everyone has different preference. Let's say um, for me, I like matte. Um, you might like something different, but how do you know what is suitable for your skin? What is suitable for your color? What is suitable for your skin type? So there's so much that is in it that you actually have to learn the basics. First off, um, you want to know what kind of color you are. Either you're warm or if you are a cool tone. In order to find out what, if either you're cool or warm, it would be um, to look at your veins. Go outside, look at your veins. If you have green veins, then you are a warm toned. If you have blue, you can see blue veins, then you are a cool tone. So um, think of it as blue being cold, so cool. Um, so why does that matter? Well, cold tones will actually need a color that is on a pinker side because that way it can um, make your skin look more life there's more life into your skin because usually cool tones your skin is going to be a little bit more on the pale side instead of being warmer which is like yellows and oranges so um, a lot of colors like it's going to say is beige or buff that's the color that you're going to go towards more um, for warm tones which is what I am I'm like a yellow color <laughs> obviously and warm, warm meaning it's towards yellow and orange um, that means usually you're going to be going in with colors that are um, bisque or um, beige can also work, neutrals. You like if you were to buy Lancome, it would say W, which means warm, N meaning neutral, meaning you have more of a gray, which is in between. Like maybe you have yellow skin like me, but you have a, um, pink cheeks, then neutral will actually neutralize that. Also, let's say um, you were to go to MAC. MAC is a lot d more different. Let's say you have warm toned skins, then you would want to have a cool tone foundation. So you would be in the NCs. But if you were to have a cool tone skin, um, then you would want to go to the NW, meaning W as warm. So you're going for the opposite to neutralize the color. So it's the same thing as the concept of correcting your color. So if you had pink cheeks, you want to have like a yellow um, foundation to neutralize it. You don't want to have a pink foundation. But then other brands, they're going to um, say you are warm and in it, it will be um, properties that will actually neutralize it. So it's a little bit confusing. I would advise you to ask um, the ask someone at the counter or um, do a little bit of research before you go out there and try to find um, which color you like in that certain brand. Next thing is going to be the texture of your skin. So um, there are dry skin, oily skin, normal skin, and unfortunately like me, I have combination skin. Um, combination usually is you have dry patches and then you do also secrete some oil throughout the day. So uh, what is the the right foundation for you. Well, um, there are different types of finishes for foundation. There is matte, which is going to give you a matte, non-shiny look. Um, usually, oily skin people will actually like that, and I absolutely love matte foundations. Um, there is also um, dewy. Dewy meaning you have this luminosity that it looks natural. It looks like you just put moisturizer, your skin is hydrated much much better for uh, mature skin because it can actually um, make your fine lines look more healthy more hydrated that is called dewy 
Then there is satin finish. Satin is actually in between dewy and matte, meaning that it is a um, very flawless look, um, but it isn't flat. Matte sometimes might give you a flat look, so um, satin is in the in-between. It looks silky. Okay, so those three, I think mostly matte would be for oily skin, drier skin would like dewy, but also if you do like a little bit more matte, but you do have a combination, you can always powder in your T-zone. Alright, so after that I've already told you about the color and about what kind of finish there are, there's also coverage. There is um, light to medium, medium to full. So um, it depends on the type of skin you have. Um, I have freckles and I do sometimes want to cover it, but I don't want a foundation so heavy that it will cover almost everything on my face. But then there's also people that have acne scars or um, acne prone skins that want to cover everything, such as for their wedding or for a photo shoot, then you would want full coverage. But most um, foundation, they are buildable, so if you actually use like you like to have a light finish, but you also sometimes want to have a fuller finish, then you can always double it up, meaning you put it all over your face one time, then you put it over your face a full time. Not blopping it on more, for se, but more of like a putting it on once and then putting it on again and building up the coverage. Alright, so let's talk about the different types of finish you can get for different brushes. Sponges will give you a more flawless look because you're just tapping it on so it looks very, very airbrushed but it's actually really heavy. If you use a foundation brush, one of those flat ones, then you are slapping it on like this and it's really spreading into your skin, into your pores, which is a really good thing. I personally like to use a full dense brush because it actually blends out and buffs the color into your face as well as make it look like your second skin. It makes it melt into your skin. Um, but you can also use your fingers. Using your fingers probably is going to give you the least coverage just because you're really working it in and smearing it all over. So um, that's just depending on what kind of finish you like. Now let's talk about what might be good for photos. Well, you want a foundation for photos that isn't going to be um, light reflectant, but during the day you might want that because you're going to be outside. You want the sun to kiss your cheeks and um, bounce off light so that your skin look more healthy. But for photos, that can be really bad because the flash is so bright, it can make your face look whiter than the rest of your body. And usually titanium dioxide is what causes that. So when you're looking for a foundation, make sure in the ingredients they either don't have titanium dioxide or doesn't have SPF. But it can have it, but just make sure it's the last product, meaning it's the least substance in the ingredients. Okay. So now, for my tips for finding the foundation for you, what I usually do is I would um, swatch it on the back of my hand, but m before you do that, make sure you know how your hand is compared to your face. A lot of people are much more tanner here than their face, but that doesn't mean that that doesn't match your skin because you don't want to match completely on your face and then you have a dark body and a white face. You don't want that. So swatching on the back of your hand is good or your neck. I find um, a lot of counters, they swatch on your neck, but I don't really like that because there is a shadow. And let's say you hold a mirror, you can't really see it. So you can't see the true color of it. So I don't like swatching on the neck, but I do like swatching on the back of my hand just so that I can meet between my true body color as well as to my face. So after you swatch, don't try to rub it all around. Because if you try to rub it all around, what you're going to get is a really blended look. And you're going to say, oh wow, that looks great. Well, yeah, if you're going to do that to your face. But you're not because the foundation is to cover imperfections. You're not going to blend it in like it's moisturizer. Unless that is what you're looking for. So what I would suggest is putting it on and tapping it and then blending it really slightly and compact it. I know you might not be using it that much. You might not use that much on your face, but you really want to see if the color is good. And then on for the edges, you want to blend it out just a little bit. Then don't make your judgment right away. What you're wanting, what you're going to want to do is actually 
let it dry. Walk around, look at lipsticks, look at blush, do other things, let it dry completely. Then judge the color. And after you judge the color, it might oxidize. A lot of different formulas will oxidize, making it a different color. It could be the moisture on your skin. It could be um, the oils, the mineral oils on your skin, um, the environment. Anything can make it oxidize to a different color. So what you want to do is just to let it set, let it do its thing. Then you judge by the color. If it's too dark, or if it's perfect but just a tad orange, you can always correct it with a powder on top. Different types of powder can make it different. Um, also, another thing that I've learned is that don't just trust it after it's oxidized on your hand only. You want to go outside in natural lighting. Um, I know that's a lot of work, but you, I think it saved more time than for you to buy the foundation, go home, and then you realize, oh my gosh, this is not my color because when you go home, you put it on, you go into your car, you look on the visor or the rear mirror and you're orange or you're pink or you're white. You don't want that. So what I do is I always, always go outside because the natural lighting is the light that you actually want it to be perfect. Um, so that is my advice because I have learned so much from going to find foundation. So um, try different types of finishes. Maybe you never thought you would be a dewy dewy finish person but you might be so you have to just try it out I know it is such a long process it's so frustrating it is for me because I haven't even found mine but you, you learn about your skin while you're in the process you learn about what you like what you prefer and it's better to say you've tried it all than to not try it and just stick to one thing that it might not be good. Um, also, you know, there's people I see that have like this different color on their face and then on down here it's all different. I'm like, do they not know it doesn't match? It's because people don't realize, you know, that the finish, the color, the quality of the foundation is going to make a difference. Not only that, but I think foundation is really important because that is the basic thing. I will be willing to pay however many for a great foundation because if I'm having a bad skin day, I want to cover it and I want a good foundation, not a foundation that's going to irritate it even more. So basically what I'm saying is foundation is really important and I advise you guys to try it out. Don't just try high end. Try drugstores. I mean, I've found so many that I love. Try it with different brushes. I think brushes really makes a difference as well. Um, you can even use your fingers. I mean, there's a lot of things that you can use for your different types, so please try it out. But um, I advise you guys to always just try it out with different types of brushes as well because you'll never know. One foundation can look totally different from... Um, a found one foundation can look totally different by just using different brushes. All right, I hope I didn't really bore you guys for my little guide to foundations, but I thought it was really important for you all to understand that um, foundation, there's so much to it from brands to colors to texture to finishes and to coverage. There's just so much um, with oxidation, with coloring, everything. So if you have any questions, if I've left anything out, I will put it in the info box. But um, if you have any questions, please let me know um, and I will try my hardest to help you guys out to find the foundation for you. And um, I guess that is it. I hope you all enjoyed this and please stay tuned for the guide to um, powders. Alright, well I will see you guys next time. Bye!